Okay, so these are notes on 7.5. Proportions in triangle, triangles. You should write the date here. And just so you're aware, what I'm going to do is I go through the definitions is I'm going to read them, and then I'm going to move on. So I'm going to save some time in the video, save myself some time. You pause the video while I'm reading it, or right after I read it, if you need to write it down. So, the side splitter theorem says if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle, so we got that, um, and it intersects the other two sides, and then it divides those sides proportionally. Proportionally. Not necessarily equally. So pause the video if you need more time to write. Now I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. Um, what that means is that you can set up a proportion um, with those two different areas. So you can set up a proportion with these different things here. These are not congruence marks. I'm just showing you where the different options are. Let's see if we can use that to our advantage. So, example one. Find the value of x. So you can always pause the video and try it before I try it. So that would be, now would be the time to do that. Or you can just let me do the problem and copy down. If you feel like you have enough understanding already, go ahead and try it. Okay? So, um, what I'm going to say here is that I have the following. I have just x over 16 equals 5 over 10. So what they're saying is each of those sections is proportional. You don't have to do the addition thing in this case. Um, you just can set them up right away. So keep in mind that we have been in the habit of adding these together, but we're not doing that here. All right, so then you cross multiply, you get 10x equals 80, and that makes x equal 8. And that is really all there is to it. Pretty straightforward. So I want to talk just for a minute about why this might make sense. So think about it. You've got this shared angle here, so it's congruent to itself. You have what type of angles here, if you think about those? Okay, take a second, remember what that word is. All right, and then you have what type of angles here? Corresponding. That's the word you're thinking of, hopefully. So you actually have two congruent triangles, two similar triangles, sorry. And you understand that, um, I guess, in a way, like if this is 5, let's just look at it for a minute. So this is 5 over here. And this side is 8, right? So those are in a ratio of 5 to 8. So I guess you could say this side and the right side is it's a ratio of 5 to 8. And then that means if this is 15, right? If this is 15 and the ratio is 5 to 8, well, then the whole thing would be 24. And that reduces to 5 to 8, right? And that means if this side right here is 10, well, if you want to make it a 5 to 8 ratio, then this would have to be 16, double 8. So what's happening is you've got similar triangles um, going on, and that's what's making this um, happen. So you don't have to really look at the whole side. You can kind of just look at the pieces of the side. That's the difference here. So take a moment, pause, pause the video, and try this problem right here. Um, use the side square theorem to find the value of x. So you're going to set up an equation, solve it, and find x. So pause the video, please, and try this problem. Okay, so now that that is done, we'll move on. And we'll talk about this next corollary. So this is kind of just building on, building on the side splitter theorem. Um, if three parallel lines intersect, then the segments intersected are proportional. So it's really just extending it to one extra line. And everything's still going to be proportional. So a lot of ways you can set up this proportion, but I would probably say A over B in this diagram down here is equal to C over D. So pause the video if you need to copy down the example. 
Um, but that's basically what we need to understand. It's kind of like just adding another line and saying that everything's still proportional. So these two sections will be proportional. Um, it's kind of like, I would think, that if you had this right here, it came up like this, right? What could you say at this point? Could you say E over F? Would, would you say that those are proportional? Yes, I would, because that's by the last theorem that we talked about. That's the side split. Now I made it a triangle. Okay, so an example. Here we go. So you should hopefully have the picture and all of this in front of you. The edges of the panels of the sail are parallel. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is what you need to know. These are all parallel to each other. Okay? Find the lengths of x and y. So what I like to do is I like to go to some place I have a lot of information. And the blue sail, I'll circle this in blue, I have both pieces of information. That's a good thing. And I guess what I'll do is I'll just do the bigger one over the smaller one. So just keep in mind I put the bigger number on top and the smaller number. If you want, you can think about it as the left over the right. I went to where I had the information, and now I'm going to simply try to figure out y. <coughs> so now I'm going to take the left of y and put it over the right of y. Oh, sorry. The left of that section and put it over y, I guess. So what you're going to get is 2y equals um, 3, 4, 5.1, I think. And so y would equal 2.6, hmm, 2 I think. Nah. 2.55? I think that might be more like it. <clears throat> so provided I did that all correctly. So 3, 4, 5.1, 2y equals that. Um, yeah, I think we're good at that point. So 2.55 for y. Then we'll go on to find x. So think about how you would set up the proportion to find x. Try to set it up yourself. That's how you know you're kind of really with me, if you can set this up before I do. So try and set it up, and I'll set it up in just a moment. red now. I'll do x over 1.7, and I want to use this again. I don't love the 2 over 1.7, but I don't see a better number to do, so 2 over 1.7. Oh, well, that's cool, because that just kind of like automatically tells me that x equals 2. So I've got x, I've got y, and I guess at that point I have solved my, um, I have solved my problem. And the cool thing is that you can write an extended proportion. Keep in mind 2 over 1.7 is equal to x over 1.7 is equal to 3 over y. So you could do it all in one if you needed to. So that's the example. And we will move on. So take a minute, pause it if you need to. This is the triangle angle bisector theorem. What it says is, if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, so maybe I should just stop there. If a ray bisects an angle of a triangle. So, I will draw a triangle. Hopefully this drawing works out going well. I've got a ray here, and I'll just go like that. And it bisects it. Okay. Then, it divides the opposite side into two segments that are proportional to the other two sides of the triangle. So two segments right here, and I'll just call them A and B, that are proportional to the other two sides of the triangle. So what are the other two sides of the triangle? Other two sides of the triangle? I guess that would be C and D. That whole side and that whole side. So that's kind of where we're at with that theorem. Um, can be a little weird, but it should work out okay.
see if maybe there's an example we could try with that if we have enough time. Uh, yeah, I think we could try an example with that. So let's do one quick example uh, before we wrap it up here. Okay. Here's one the book has. Uh, it's a ray, so it really should keep going, but we're bisecting that, okay? And we have the following given to us. X, 8, 5, and 6. So the question becomes, how do you set this up? So if these are proportional, uh, I guess what there's a couple of different ways we could do this. Uh, we could really take 8 over x and make it equal 5 over 6. 8 over x must equal 5 over 6. Um, and then you should be good to go. So you get 48 equals 5x, and x equals 9 point, uh, 9 and 3 fifths, or 9.6, I think. Okay? So what I'll have you do is, um, wherever you have some space, because this is pretty short, okay, and I know it's a pretty short assignment, what I want you to try is the quick check, quick check on page um, 400, and I'll write out what that is so you can try it. So please put this on scrap paper or on the notes somewhere on the margin, whatever you need to do. It shouldn't be a big deal. It's just this problem right here, okay? I'm giving you this. I'm giving you this. Sorry for using all the same color. I'm giving you this. I'm giving you this. And I'm saying y equals what. So find y, please. Should only take a minute or so. Um, find a space for it. I'm sure you can figure it out. Um, good luck. And I will see you in class tomorrow. Make sure anything else is signed in class today, um, or anything else is signed in class in general is done, so just keep that in mind.